2019 was a pretty good year for movies, but I think this is the first year where I was, without a doubt, more blown away by the television shows than I was with film. And while the show I'm gonna focus on isn't necessarily the best to come out of last year, it isn't as flawless as Fleabag or Chernobyl, which are both 10 out of 10 to me. I've still been thinking about this one non-stop and I am really excited to see where they go with it. That show being Euphoria. I'm gonna keep this video spoiler free. Getting high school teen melodrama right is hard. We have countless great high school comedies because high school is dumb and it's easy to make fun of it. Sure, the comedies might add some really emotional scenes here and there to add some weight to the movie, but whatever drama is included in high school comedies is often resolved quickly. And even in shows where there's more than just a little drama to it, as long as there's enough room to wink at you that it's not taking itself too seriously, then it works. You think this is hard? Try being waterboarded, that's hard! I think the first season of Glee does this really well, and yes, I'm fully aware that many people can't stand to watch the show, but I will defend the first season until my dying breath because I think it struck the perfect balance between real drama and satirical drama. Do it. Break it like you broke my heart. where you can have a subplot like a teen pregnancy that does have serious emotional moments. And I needed you. I needed my mom. But they also make so much fun of the situation, right out the gate, like with the story Quinn tells Finn to get him to believe that he's the father. But we were wearing our swimsuits. As Jude said, a hot tub is the perfect temperature for sperm. It, it helps it swim faster. Oh my god. Oh my god. It is deliberately ridiculous, so you aren't being forced to take it so seriously. And it makes the moments that are serious more gratifying because you aren't constantly inundated with the idea that this is very serious social commentary on teen pregnancy. It reminds me of Juno, which could have easily been a full-on melodramatic tale of this 16-year-old. But a lot of the movie is really funny, which makes the handful of sad, emotional scenes super memorable and powerful. In a future video that I'm working on, I'll fully break down in detail why the first season of Glee should not be lumped together with the rest of the show that quickly turned into the dumpster fire that went off the rails the way it did. But my point is just, when it comes to these shows, I can only stomach copious amounts of high school drama if I'm not meant to be taking it too seriously. When the characters in season 1 were overdramatized, they were being mocked, and it was only in the smaller, quieter moments that had the real drama. Now, this is easier for Glee because it's a comedy first, drama second. So when a show does come along that focuses primarily on teen drama that you are supposed to take seriously, a show that is dealing with heavy topics and is meant to provide commentary on the struggles of the modern day teenager, they tend to not be very good because they are overly melodramatic and extremely cringe. I'm not talking about all teenage characters or teen dramas in general. I can list many great ones, but the best usually have an added element of sci-fi, mystery, fantasy, dystopian that takes the teens out of their ordinary lives. What I want to make clear is that I'm specifically talking about shows that are purely about the day-to-day -day life of high schoolers and the issues they face. Shows like 13 Reasons Why. When the first season came out, the initial reaction that I remember was one of praise that we had a show which took a raw, unflinching look at teenage mental health, assault, and other issues. But once we sat on it a little longer, and especially once psychologists started voicing concerns over how it was handled, the tide turned pretty quickly, and I think rightfully so. I'm not gonna critique it on its irresponsibility or whatever, because even though I do think experts should be listened to when they talk about the contagion effect and all of that, I also don't believe that they intended on causing these problems with the show. And this talk of shows with teenage characters being irresponsible always gets tacked on to anything dealing with topics that are above PG-13, regardless of whether the show is good or not. So I'm less inclined to focus on that. But what I am going to critique, and why I think the show is so bad, is that purely from a storytelling perspective, in subsequent seasons they continue to insist that 13 Reasons Why is important and they are a serious show dealing with serious issues that you are supposed to take seriously. Yet, when telling these stories, they don't bother putting much thought in how they present them. It's like they pick some heavy plot points and then write them out in the most overdramatized, gratuitous way they can, and what we're left with is something that very closely resembles a soap opera. A sad, endless barrage of melodramatic plots that aren't doing anything below the surface. All in the name of an honest portrayal of what teens go through. Only it doesn't feel honest at all. It feels like these themes are being exploited for cheap drama. And yes, like I said at the start, getting high school teen melodrama right is hard. 
I understand that when you have a bunch of high school age characters and you try and fit all these multiple themes in their story, for it to not come across as a soap opera is difficult. But it can be done when more thought is put into how audiences, in particular the target demographic which is a young audience, should receive it. 13 years ago, a show came along that did exactly that. That show is Skins. The UK version, not the American MTV one that was cancelled after the first season. If you don't know, Skins was a British teen comedy drama that followed the lives of a group of teenagers through their final two years of high school, so 16 to 18 year olds. It dealt with a variety of controversial storylines and issues, and followed a format where all, or most of the main characters, got their own dedicated episode that focused primarily on them, their story, and whatever specific issues they were facing. Sound familiar? We'll get to that. What Skins managed to do so well was give all these heavy themes to a handful of teenage characters and do so in a way that is a little over the top yet believable, a little melodramatic but also genuine and real. And the reason they were successful in doing this, well, a show like 13 Reasons Why completely fails at it, is because this wasn't a bunch of writers who thought that in order for the story to be taken seriously, it needed to be this doom and gloom overly serious tone. It wasn't just about looking down on a new generation and the problems they face. Skins knows that it is not an adult drama and therefore doesn't need to be told the way those stories are typically told. The genius of it, and what I think is the key to making shows like this work, is playing into the fantasy aspects of being a teen. Far too many shows approach stories like this through the lens of sadness or disapproval of troubled youth and Skins flip that around. It captured the positively messy, wild, chaotic, and dare I say euphoric whirlwind that teens feel inside and either do experience or low-key want to experience. And that doesn't have to change just because they are dealing with insert heavy topic. Approaching the show like this takes it away from the pity party that are shows like 13 Reasons Why and turns it into an actual party while still maintaining the same exact themes. The similarities between Skins and Euphoria are too similar to ignore, but by far my favorite similarity between the two shows is that Euphoria also decided to take this approach in how it tells its story. The themes of the show are just as heavy as they were in Skins, in fact it's even taken up a notch due to the freedom airing on HBO gives them, yet despite how dark the character stories can get, it remains one of the most vibrant, colorful, fun, beautifully shot shows I have ever seen. Let's talk about the cinematography for example. I won't lie, at first I was like, does every shot really need to look like we're in a music video? Does the camera really need to be doing all this gymnastics or is this just a way to look cool for no reason? And then it clicked for me. Euphoria is playing into that fantasy just like Skins did. And I'm fairly certain that had Skins been given the HBO level money to play around with shots like this, they would have. Creator Sam Levinson knew he wanted to shoot as much of the show on a soundstage as he could, so that shots like this were possible. He says when he went to HBO to discuss the look and feel of the show and told them he wanted to build everything on sound stages, there was this long pregnant pause and he could tell they were confused. Their response was, but isn't the show supposed to be gritty? Don't you want to be out there in the streets and locations just up close and dirty? And he said, not really, no. This shows that he's completely aware of what I'm talking about here, that for a show to feel real and gritty, it doesn't need to be in this doom and gloom tone throughout. It can be the complete opposite of that, and not only be just as gritty, but even more so, because it is an extension of the characters and audience it is about. It has how they view the world in mind. This isn't limited to how it's shot, it's there everywhere. It's in the score composed by Labyrinth. Levinson told him that he wanted it to sound like Kanye West's Yeezus with the Danny Elfman feel to it, which is pretty crazy because it does sound exactly like that. It's loud and epic and beautiful. It's also there in the style and makeup. The creators are completely aware that teens aren't walking around with glitter and stars all over their faces, but that's not the point. They are capturing a feeling, a feeling that makes for a wonderful viewing experience and the rougher parts of the show a lot easier to absorb because it's not all that we are getting. Now there are two major points of criticism that get brought up whenever this approach is taken. One, it's unrealistic. People that say that high school wasn't like this for me or most teens don't live like this, 
which is an incredibly annoying point because of course not. Part of playing into fantasy is suspension of disbelief. The characters and skins were lucky enough to all have parents that are complete idiots, oblivious to what their children were up to, which allowed them to get away with whatever they wanted. That's fantasy. An unlikely circumstance for most high schoolers, but I don't know why we hold this particular genre to this standard of realism. It happened with Euphoria as well, as soon as it came out. Articles from the New York Times and other publications talking about how inaccurate or unrealistic it is. If realism is what you want, you can watch a documentary. These are fictional stories that have truth within them. Of course, it isn't representative of the entire teenage experience because there's no such thing. And when you fit so many social commentaries into such few characters, it is bound to feel a little over the top and untrue to what the average group of teens are like. A story being realistic or not is not about whether it completely mirrors your own experience. Realistic stories hinge almost entirely on emotion. Sam Levinson completely understood this saying, we established early on that each scene ought to be an interpretation of reality or a representation of an emotional reality. I'm not interested in realism, I'm interested in an emotional realism. That is why I think Skins and Euphoria is a million times more realistic and why the way they handle the themes is a million times more believable than with a show like 13 Reasons Why. Even though, on a technical sense, I guess you would say that that one is more realistic. It doesn't matter because it doesn't feel that way. The second piece of criticism, and the reason I think American TV took so long to make something like Skins after the MTV remake flopped is because of the people that say playing with the fantasy aspect like this is something along the lines of irresponsible, a bad influence, or glorifies any one of the following. Skins US got cancelled first and foremost because it was bad, but even if it was good, the intense campaign against it would be exactly the same because of these reasons. It happened with the UK version, it happened with Euphoria, and people that say things like this are incapable of differentiating between something like a Project X and Euphoria. Project X is entirely and unashamedly about teenage fantasy, nothing else. It is designed to have idiot young audiences watch it and think, whoa, cool, I want to do that. Trust me, I was one of those people. Euphoria and skins aren't like that. Anyone that's watched them knows that it's different. In the second episode of Euphoria, there's the scene where Rue is asked by her teacher to go on stage and say a memorable thing that's happened to her over the last summer. I don't, I don't, I can't think of What we get is an extremely uncomfortable, close-up shot of Rue filled with anxiety, unable to speak as she's forced to think through the memories of her doing drugs, fighting with her mom, being discharged from hospital, and trying to make her sister laugh because the last time her sister saw her, Rue was overdosed on her bedroom floor. That is just one of the many scenes that are heartbreaking, hard to watch, and are intentionally drawn out for a long time so you're forced to confront the harsh reality of it. Open the door! <laughs> you did this to me! And just because it chooses to show the opposite too, the fun, exhilarating side does not make it a glorification. It makes it honest. I know you're not allowed to say it. <laughs> the drugs are kind of cool. <laughs> the creator himself is a recovering addict, so you know his goal with this isn't glorification. He just has a clear understanding that the best way to tell these stories is through the mind of a teenager. That you can have two shows with many of the same themes on teenage life, but the one you'd much rather watch is the one that talks about these issues under the cover of teenage fantasy. That's it, thanks for watching, I hope you liked this video. Like, comment, subscribe if you did. Hunter Schaefer 2020. Follow me on Twitter, link in the description. And again, thanks for watching, bye. Are you talking to your mama about me? No. <laughs>